It's the hosts and many people's favourites to lift the trophy versus the reigning world champions. Quarterfinals don't get bigger than this. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Rugby World Cup 2023, quarterfinal number four, France versus South Africa. This is at the Stade de France in Saint-Denis, just outside Paris. It's on Sunday, 15th of October. Kickoff is at 8 p.m. BST. This is world number three versus world number two. And as I said in the intro, it's also the hosts versus the defending world champions. So it just is crazy, crazy game to have in the quarterfinal, but it's going to be so exciting. Let's have a look at the teams, starting with the French team. So front row, we got Cyril Bai, Pito Maovaca and Uni Antonio. So Bai back in there, um, you know, he's he's, he's an excellent um, scrummager, but also, you know, really contributes around the park as well. Maovaca there, you know, the Marchand, out but Malvaca since he's come in he's a very different type of player but he's you know he's added a lot of positives to um to this French pack as well maybe not as big of a threat at the breakdown as Marchand because Marchand was a bit of a specialist at it but still you know in the loose contributing well Antonio is just a massive human being and you know if they're on your line and he's carrying from a meter out even the box is going to struggle to prevent them from getting over. You've again got Wokey and Flamon in the second row there. Really nice combination between those two. Wokey, we've seen him get up there and attacking opposition lineouts. That's going to be very interesting in this one because we saw the Springboks do the same to Ireland as well. So, you know, the, the locking battle in this game. You know, just massive battles all across the field. But the locking battle, you know, could be one where, you know, the set piece is, is going to go one way or the other, depending on that. And yeah, Wokey just getting up there and, you know, nicking line outs or just disrupting. He's been really good at that. Flamon, um, great con contribution from him as well. And, you know, it's, it's a quality second row pairing. Quality again in the back row, you got Anthony Gillon, Char Charles Olivon, and Gregory Aldrit. Aldrit, I think, has probably, for me at least, has been the standout of them for the tournament. He's been on excellent form. Like the, they're, they're all great players, but he just stood out a little bit more for me. And, you know, he's going to have to have a massive game uh, on Sunday if France are actually going to, you know, keep that dream of winning the World Cup at home in Paris alive. Talking about like dreams have been rested on someone's shoulders. Anton Dupont, he's back. You know, he had that, what was it, a fracture or a break in his jaw or um, whatever it was. Like he, he's back already. It's crazy. Like the guy is just super, super human and not sure how long he's going to last through the, you know, the, the game, whether it's going to be, you know, almost, you know, full 80 minute performance or will he come off, you know, with 30 minutes to go. But Luku, he's been in deputizing and, you know, he's been good as well. So it, it's not the big fear that maybe it would have been, you know, before the tournament that Dupont was like the linchpin of the team and there's, there's a big drop off. Luku, like Dupont, you can't replace him. Like he's, he's just a, like a player of his generation as it were. The, the same way the survey is for New Zealand, I think that, you know, you get players who can, who can rise up to that level on occasion, but to be consistently at that level is just crazy crazy good and that's what Dupont is for this team so how long he stays on is going to be very important now you know just obviously going to be you know people are going to be watching the first time that he, he goes into heavy contact but I saw one where um, in training this week he was in contact with one of I can't remember was it was it Chalabert or was it um, who was it it might have been Jalabert or somebody else, but basically Dupont <laughs> was the one standing at the end of it, and the other guy was on it was on his back. So you know, there's there's no 
um, Freer, I think at least from him, of going into heavy contact. He's going to see a lot of heavy contact against uh, South Africa, but you know he he's up to that. I think, and it's just a case of, in terms of fitness, having missed those games and not being able to train. You know, uh, he was super fit anyway, so he's probably going to be fine. But it'll be interesting to see. How, you know how long he actually lasts in the game. You got Shalabar there at ten, who's having a great tournament. You know with no Entomac, um, he's really stepped up to the plate. Then Blbre preferred on the left wing over Villier. It just shows how good this this young player is. That you know he's able to dis- to displace someone that people were were maybe thinking was one of the best wingers in the world. And this young guy comes along and says, "Nope." That's my jersey, and I'm going to show you why. And he has shown us why, in fairness. Centre then he got Dante and Fiku. Dante, you know, he's he's one of the big threats for them at the breakdown. And you know, the Springboks they've got to watch out for that when he's in there getting over the ball. He's got to be cleaned out quickly because otherwise he latches on. Once he latches onto that ball, you're not getting him off until the pen, you know, the referee blows the whistle for a penalty. Fiku, defensive leader, also great in attack as well. It's it's just a really nice center combination there. You got Damian Pano, you know, just scoring tries for fun on that right wing as well. Tomo Ramos at fullback there he's the main kicker and geez the guy can kick from almost anywhere and long range kicking you know um at the posts in this game i think you're going to see a few from both teams in this one and if it's a tight game whoever can, is can be accurate from those long distances could you know play a part in deciding the game as well onto the bench then we have uh Bugarit is the uh, replacement hooker so you know the, the guy's been decent um through the through the tournament and he's looked to, to you know to contribute when he comes on movak is definitely the better of the two players at least at the moment but you know it's not like you'd be afraid of him having to come on he's definitely going to come on at some stage it's probably going to be with about 20 minutes to go or maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less then you got wardy there and alda harry for the replacement props so you know d- decent stocks coming off the bench there you got romaine taufi fanua who you know most people think is very lucky that he's still able to play in this game now he probably should have got a red, red card earlier on in the, in the tournament but you know him coming on is probably going to be important because again that set piece depending on you know france like to like to to go up the line a lot and use their um use their line out so he's going to be important for that coming on there and making sure that they can secure their own ball got uh francois cross you know who probably will feel a little bit aggrieved not to actually be starting in this one but you know the the form of the guys on there uh, especially you know uh, as i said aldrid but jalons and olivon have been excellent as well means that you know a great player of his caliber just has to to wait for his chance to come off the bench then you got uh suku makalu really you know great to have him on the bench i think for france because he can obviously cover the back row but you now he's shown his versatility you can stick him out on the wing and he won't miss a beat there you could stick him in into your midfield as well so he's a great option to have on the bench then you got luku there who has been starting recently as well so he'll come on and you know there won't there won't be that kind of nervousness that there might have been if his first you know start against major opposition in this rugby world cup had have been you know in a quarter final i think he's going to be fine when he comes on then you got uh mo, mo fana there finishing off the bench so really strong team from france and then you know talking about strong teams let's have a look at the box so front row we got stephen kitsoff and uh Mbanambi Malherba. So Kitsoff Mal and Malherba, you know, they've been the starting props for, for the big games. Mbanambi is preferred to be the starting hooker as well in this one. So it's a really strong um front row contingent there. Kitsoff, you know, um he he's kind of like himself from Malherba struggled a little bit in the in the scrum, but around the park they've been really good. Kitsoff especially, he's another breakdown threat 
for you know latching on top ball and winning the penalties as well and but they would like to improve their performance in the scrum if, if they can do that and perform as well as they have been around the park then you know south africa are going to have every chance of winning this one second row then you got etzabet and mustard etzabet is another one who is just you know he's a player of his generation really in terms of, of second rows he's just so good and you know mustard has been very good as well um through this through this rugby world cup and there's been so much competition as well to be etzabet's partner and as i said you know these two are going to look to to threaten that uh, France line out on the French ball, but they've now also got to be worried with the, especially with Wokey in that French second row, that they protect their own ball as well. So that's going to be a hell of a battle to see who comes out on top of that one. Back row there, you got Sia Khaleesi, another player like Dupont who had an injury where he should have really, you know, missed the World Cup. The guy's back months in advance and like he, he's just on top form. Uh, you know, just again shows how superhuman some of these guys are to be able to do stuff like that. And he's been in really good form. Two players that really came into form, I think, through the World Cup are his, you know, his partners in there. Peter Steph to Toy and Dwayne Vermeulen because in the rugby championship, if you saw these guys playing, you would have said no, neither of them, you know, if if, if this game was say tomorrow at that stage, you would have said no, it wouldn't start either of them. There's too many other players who are playing really well and you know, the likes of Quagga Smith, etc. Uh, and these guys just did not look fit, either of them. But through the warm-ups and through the pool games, they've gotten back to their fitness and have gotten back to those peaks that we've seen them before. And, you know, they're both worthy of their starts here as well. And the fact that they have those guys behind them who are all in great form as well. There's just tons of great uh, back row stocks there in, in that box squad. That It means these guys, they have to perform. If not, there are going to be people on the bench who can come on and do the job instead. So they, they know that they've got to give at least you know um it depends obviously when the bench comes on but at least 45 50 minutes of top class stuff from them is expected then another big call here well two big calls went really one in a row corpus reinark starting at nine he has been kind of the form nine of for the box during the pool stages like faf the clerk he had through the rugby championship had played himself and the warm-ups played himself back into being first choice and now you know uh ryan Ark has, has been able to rest that jersey off him again so competition for that nine jersey means that you know there's four nines in the squad and if you're not performing um you're not even going to be you know anywhere near the the, the match day squad because there's three guys who are chomping at the bit to take that jersey off your back manny lebock there are 10 you know, a lot of people probably would have expected that Pollard would, would come in to start for this one. But Lebock, he gives them more in terms of running that back line. And, you know, we look at some stats in a little bit, but people think that the box kicked the crap out of the ball and, you know, they keep it in the forwards a lot. Sometimes they are guilty of keeping in the forwards when going into backs would be better. But Lebock, when, when he does have to give it out to the backs, he's I, for me, he's the better of the two options in terms of, you know, finding those passes to put someone through a gap or just organizing things back there as well to make sure that, that they can exploit space. And then if you have Pollard coming on then to take crucial kicks towards the end that might actually win the game, maybe that's the best way around to have them. Lebock, though, you know, he was actually decent off the team to tee last time out as well. So hopefully he's fixed that. And it wasn't just, you know, one good game. And in this one, the nerves are going to get to him again. We'll have to see on that. Left wing, then you got Cheslin Colby. He was under pressure for his place through the rugby championship and coming into the warm ups. But, you know, his class, I think, rose to the top a little bit. Guy's been in great form and he's going to be a huge threat. Both sets of wingers, you know, attack and defense against each other is going to be very important. Centre's got Damon Delende and Jesse Creel. So, you know, there are a lot of options there in that, that for the centre pairings. You know, people might have expected even Kane and Moody to, to be starting this one. But, you know, this is, these guys have shown that they can do it. 
at this level and you know it's it's a nice pairing there i think in the centers as well dale endy you know um he was kind of through the rugby championship like esther hazen was the guy that looked like he was maybe going to start at 10 but dale endy came back in and you know he's again shown why he he was the preferred 12 previous to that you got uh, one guy who has really taken his chance is Kurtley Aronson there on the right wing. He's just shown so much better form than Mpimpi that, you know, it's been very hard for Mpimpi to get back into the starting side. And then the battle at fullback too. you got Damien Phillips who wins that with, you know, LaRue missing out on a starting position at least. But, you know, all the competition that the box have in terms of positions is really going to help in, in terms of preparation for this game because it means that the guys who are on there, they, they, they know they've got to do their job because, you know, uh, knee neighbor won't be um, afraid of just hooking someone that isn't performing and putting somebody on that can perform. On to the bench then. So, you know, we've gone for um, a 5-3 split. I saw um, <laughs> there, there were some... Um, there were some tweets um, going about, like in terms of um, what the, the split would be, and it was like seven one eight zero, and then four four with a big question mark after it. But it's a five three split on this one. So we've got Dion Free, who you know a lot of people were um, kind of worried about how he would go with his line throwing in. But in the end, when he started that game at hooker, he, he hit his man pretty much every time. Um, now with the likes of, um, you know, Wokey and Flamon on the French side, when he comes on, if they're still there, he, he it's going to be a little bit more pressure in terms of hitting his man because he was, you know, um, throwing in against very little opposition you know in terms of there, there weren't really pods going up against them all that much but um you know he's had he's had one good game there and you know he, i don't i don't think he's going to be an absolute disaster at least when he comes on you got oxen Che there and vincent cock as well they've looked actually the better props coming off the bench for me um through the pool stages got orgy stamen who's just a massive human being and he really does add something when it comes on where like he nearly busted through that irish midfield that one time like and you know the, the the guy just can give you go forward when maybe others can't and you know he does have great impact especially against tired bodies quagga smith if that guy comes on you know he's going to turn ball over he's going to win penalties at the breakdown and maybe he can be part of you know an effort to to switch momentum back into the box favor if they need to do it got faf the clerk there at nine we all know um how good he is and you know even though he had a dip in form he's back to that kind of form again Andre pollard he's going to get his kicks you know that and you know he he's got that game under his belt now as well so when he comes on there's no kind of concerns about his fitness willie de you know when he comes on as well you, you're going to have a a bit more of a, a playmaker willem is more of a kind of a a runner kind of thing looking for gaps larue is a great playmaker as well and you know he's maybe going to look to put people through gaps and you know both of them are very solid at the back door and they're going to have to be as well because a lot of balls are going to come their way up in the air and you know from um you know from that back three um and also you know dupont likes to box box kick too so got you know two very solid options there for them so how do i think the game is going to go well some people when they look at this game they probably think that you know it's a game it's a team that you know loves to to kick the ball versus uh, a team that loves to run the ball and in some senses you would be right but you know you might be thinking that it's the box that are the team that like to kick the ball but the stats will tell you that that is not actually true um through the pool stages, four games each. France kicked 121 times to South Africa's 81, um, and they kicked for a total of 4,309 meters to South Africa's 2,010 meters. So, if there's a team that likes to kick between these two, it's 
it's the home team it's france and that's what i'm talking about with the, with those with the back three for south africa there's going to be a lot of kicks coming their way whether it's you know long kicks from the likes of ramos or it's box kicks coming from the pawn they're going to have to be solid under that ball there's going to be huge competition for for you know uh, around the kind of area where it's landing as well so y you've not only got to be solid on the ball you've also got to be competitive and get up there ahead of the the you know player that's coming in to try and put you off your stride as well so that's going to be an important area of the game and then in terms of you know running the ball both teams actually run the ball pretty much around the, the same amount like France have, have uh, carried the ball 476 times to South Africa's 432, so not a huge difference there. And then France have made 2,222 meters, and South Africa almost exactly the same, 2,195, so less than 30 meters between them in terms of ball ball carrying through the tournament. So it'd show you that you know South Africa they they can they can move the ball as well. It's not just um, you know the old stereotype of kicking; they've moved away from that. You know, seeing those massive forwards, you might think they're forward dominated as well. But you know, forwards given the platform, but they've got those strike runners in the backs as well who can make ground, and they've been using them to great effect as well. So, with all that said, you know, this is is another one. Every single quarterfinal is so difficult to 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 call because South Africa they they did lose that one game against Ireland in the pool, but. I watched that game. South Africa were amazing in that game. <laughs> and I, 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 I honestly can't tell you why they they lost the game. Obviously, um, Ireland were the better team on the night, but that performance in that game was amazing. You just completely took Ireland's um, line out away from them in you know for uh, most of the game. Basically, Ireland had to sort it out in the second half to. to just get back on parity and then they were you know they were basically one um mall away from actually getting the score and then having a conversion to win the game right at the end too so it was very tight and you know france are not going to um, just run away with this the south africa they're the world champions they're not just going to hand the trophy back you know they're, they're going to fight for this they're going to make it really difficult for for france um you know, one interesting area is going to be the scrum because South Africa, um, they've actually been, you know, um, one of the worst scrums to come out into the quarterfinals. I think it's the second worst of the eight quarterfinals at 76%. But France, not that much better at 80 So getting on top there and staying on top there could be important. And, you know, as well, just on the stats i have another video that goes more in depth on the stats for for that covers all four quarterfinals so if you want to to um see a bit more of that go check that out on the channel but in terms of winner you know the only thing that i can i can use to split these two teams at the minute is that home advantage and i think that's going to tip it just a little bit into france's favor and that's going to give them um the win onto the semi-final but whoever of the whoever wins this and goes on to that semi-final they're going to be an absolutely formidable opponent for you know um for whoever is is their opposition there and i think if in fairness whoever wins the semi-final is absolutely going to be the favorite then to go on to and advance to the final from their semi-final so but on this one i had to pick a winner and i'm going for france